Hey everyone, this is Fabrello and welcome back and today it's time for the pickups of the months of April and May. I managed to gather quite some stuff as usual, a bit of everything, which I'm very happy for that. Some really unexpected items, um, uh, which I can say it's kind of the best when you see something that you don't, you're not planning on buying, but then you can't, you have to get it because it's a great um, addition for your collection. So we got games, movies like always, um, a book of all things, <laughs> I usually don't show them but this is worth it, and a really really cool CD. So let's start like always with the games and we're going to start with the 3DS since um, I'm in the process of playing a big game on the 3DS and I think I'm close to the end and uh, afterwards I'm really planning on uh, getting into a more action-based game um, I already won ready for the DS and I, did, I, I wanted something similar on the 3DS so I decided since it, it, was, it was very cheap and I've always been a fan of the series and I'm very curious about this and it's this entry on the 3DS and that is Shinobi from Sega. Uh, in all honesty, I haven't heard much about it, but j that's just me not looking for because up until now I've never been very um, it's not I've been interested. It's like I never actually like seeking this game out. But as I said, I always liked the series. Um, Especially, I remember I played the hell out of the Shinobi on the Game Gear. That game was worth owning a Game Gear for. It was amazing. So it looks interesting, and on on the back, uh, the few reviews that I read while I was buying this on Amazon. And as I said, I spent like five pounds or something. It was not expensive. And, um, and they say like it's a good game, it's very hard, so I like a challenge every once in a while. And I like these ninja games, so Shinobi on the 3DS, very happy to add that to my collection. And uh, it might be one of the next game I'm playing, who knows. Uh, next, and again, very happy for this, we're going, we are going to move on the, to the DS. And uh, this is a series I've always been curious about. I've always heard a lot of good um, a lot of good things from many many different peoples. And it's the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, so I think and pretty sure uh, this is the first game in this now very famous series. And as I said, I've always been very curious for, about this, especially now I kind of pulled the trigger because after beating Dengenrompa 3, I was looking for something similar, uh, and similar at least um, not the same because nothing can emulate the experience of a Dengenrompa game, but from what I heard, especially the part of the trials in here are like, I mean, like, it is, for what I read, like, if you like the tries in Dengarompa, you're going to love Phoenix Wright. So, again, it wasn't very expensive, very happy for that. And uh, also, as I said, I heard a lot of good things about this series, so I really hope to play it as soon as possible. And especially to get into this series, because there are a lot of these on DS and 3DS. And um, also, one thing that I heard about the Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright series, it's that they managed to combine, to, to, to create a perfect like combination of serious drama and uh, humor, which is something I'm, I'm very looking forward to. So, Phoenix Wright and the DS cannot wait to play this. Um, next, we're moving to the Game Boy Advance, uh, which it's always been a console uh, that I greatly enjoyed and, and this was kind of like an, an impulsive buy because as the from the moment I saw it I, I heard of it actually uh, I said I have to get it and luckily enough again it was cheap because probably it's not a sought-after game and as a, a brief explanation this basically I was I think really looking my 
Facebook or something. And uh, I was on a video game related page and people, there was this post about, I would like, uh, do you know, do you guys know of any um, strategy RPG, which is a samurai themed? I was like, okay, that's very specific. And someone uh, replied with this game, Onimusha Tactics. I was like, what is that? I've never heard of it. Because obviously I know of the Onimusha series, uh, starting on the PS2. <clears throat> and uh, I also play some parts of the first one, but I never really, I never had the chance of getting into the Onimusha series, and I always want to. And eventually it's going to happen. Um, but I certainly didn't know that there is a strategy RPG based on the Onimusha series. I was really shocked, so of course I had to try it. Again, as I said, luckily enough it was kind of cheap. It's a uh, very reasonable price. Uh, so I said, I love my Game Boy Advance games. If it looks good from like pictures I saw online here and there, and I said, like, let's give it a chance. And uh, I'm so curious about it. Now, of course, I cannot close this. And I cannot wait to play Onimusha Tactics on the Game Boy Advance. But very curious. And it's always great to learn about games you never heard. It's something like... Um, I don't want to say it never happened anymore, because... Uh, I mean... <laughs> there are so many games I don't know of, of course, and uh, that I haven't played. But uh, to hear of a game like this out of out of nowhere and uh, it was a it was a great moment I really liked it as like the more you know you can always learn something and I, I really hope and I'm pretty sure it's but I really hope it's a good game but if it's not whatever I didn't spend much money but um, I I really hope it's good Finally, let's move to the Vita, my beloved PS Vita. And we got two games here. Uh, one, I've been waiting to buy this for a long time now because I was just uh, looking at prices to go down because I was kind of uh, anticipating this game for a long time. Like, I remember seeing, like, uh, watching. Uh, um, trailers or promo videos or something and then the game came out and it wasn't very well received I would say oh that's unfortunate because it looks interesting at least to me so I say let's just wait because of course whenever a new PS Vita game is released it's kind of pricey so I say since it's not very well received let's wait a bit some months or something and eventually the prices I think are going to go down and that's what happened basically I waited and waited and now I think I spent a third of its original price I think I spent 12 pounds or something which for a Vita game it's not it's very cheap and that game is Akiba's Beat uh, I know this again it's not it's not very well received although I, I read very divisive comments saying like uh, uh, like if you like visual novels or RPGs, you're going to love this. I say, but well, the people who actually um, shoot on this game, I mean, what they were, what what were they expecting? I mean, it obviously is from the beginning. This looked like an RPG or something like that. I mean, it was very weird what I read, and it, and like always, it makes me, it makes you think about like our mentality in terms of reviewers and stuff like that. I'm not going into that. Uh, but uh, in general, I mean, by just by looking at the game, I was thinking, like, w what were you expecting? <laughs> then maybe I don't know. The maybe the combat system is not the best. And maybe it, in general, it's not a mind-blowing uh, experience of a game. But again, what were you expecting from something like Akiba's Beat? I mean, from the first moment, I was like, it looks like a sort of like. I don't want to say silly, but your stereotypical Japanese game. Uh, now I don't remember <clears throat> if it's a 
proper like turn-based RPG if it's more action oriented, which it's fine. I mean, I don't mind. But I've always been very curious about it, and uh, honestly, I can't wait to play Kiba's Beat eventually. But uh, because if I remember well, it's a sort of a sort of sequel of Akiba's Trip, which people say also another reason like it's completely different from Akiba's Trip and stuff like that. Like, uh, of course, but. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I mean, very, I was just looking at the pictures, I'm very, very curious about Akiba's Beat, always been, because it looks like a very, very quirky, unique, and niche-ish Japanese game, so very happy to have it. And finally, oh, this, this title, um... So a bit of backstory about this. Basically, I've been looking. I was. I, I've been trying to get this game for months now. Uh, I was looking on it on Amazon. It was impossible to get it there. So I moved to Play Asia. Okay. Uh, find it there. Place my order. Then I received like a. Uh, what was it? I don't know. If it was an email or something. Oh no. They didn't send me nothing, so basically, I placed my order, everything's fine, I was like, okay, I got the game, I just need to wait for the shipping. Uh, then the next day, uh, I, I went to work, and during lunch, um, I went out to get a coffee or something, and my, and my card didn't work. It's like, okay, that's weird, so I try again. Nothing. My, my card didn't work. So I go to the bank, of course, since I have time to waste, and I ask them, like, oh, my, my card doesn't work, what's going on? I say, oh yeah, like, we block your card, oh, thanks for asking, by the way, we block your card uh, because, like, the fraud team saw something weird with your uh, purchases. I was like, okay, uh, what? <laughs> Again, thanks for asking and blocking my card. Um, but yeah, we they they saw you went on this website called Play Asia. I was like, oh my god, like yes, that's uh, like a website where you can purchase uh, like video games and DVDs from like Japan or stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay, it's like it's a sort of Amazon basically. Like, what do you think it is from the name? Like a pornographic stuff, and even if it, even if it was, which I don't blame. I mean, it's my own damn business. I mean, I hate this kind of stuff. We're so much slaves of these banks and stuff. I mean, not to say these pathetic things, but it is true. So I un I, I wasted hours to um, unlock my bank. But in the meanwhile, like my order was cancelled for some reason. So the next day, I went again on Play Asia, uh, looked for it. Okay, place my order. Fine. I think at this point, I hope the fraud team of my bank knew that this is not a weird website. So everything was fine. Then, the same evening, I've received an email from PlayAsia saying, Well, uh, we're sorry, but we're run out of the item. I was like, Motherfucker! So, I gave up on this item. I said, Well, fine, I'm never gonna get it because I specifically, specifically wanted this on the Vita. Uh, so I, well, I, I, I guess I have to buy it on the PS4, which I don't want to, but if that's the only way, because I heard so many good things about this game, especially like from Alex Return to Mother Base, it really gushed about this game. But as I said, I gave up hope and said, well, whatever, eventually I'll buy it on the PS4. Then, a couple of weeks ago, I went... Uh, to Glasgow for a conference where I was speaking for work and what I always do when I went around for like conferences and stuff like that in whatever town I always out of curiosity look for anime store and independent video game stores I found one in Glasgow it's called uh, GeForce Games I think so a big shout out to GeForce Games in Glasgow because I went there and they had this amazing selection of everything. Like from PS1 games were shit, like always, like most of it's sports game and crap like that. But they had a massive selection of like uh, 
uh, PS2 games, Xbox games of that generation. Uh, of course, PS3, PS4, but that, that goes without saying. They also had a decent selection of PSP games, which it's rare. And especially, they had a pretty strong selection of Vita games. I was shocked because, of course, in regular like mainstream uh, chain stores, you don't see PS Vita games anymore. And, of course, I saw this game, so I can finally show you. Again, that it's so difficult for me to read this title. Utawareru Mono, The Mask of Deception. Finally, I can show it to you, because this all long explanation. Just to say, I went through everything to get this game, so I, it better be good. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure, like, as I said, I heard so many good things about it, and I was very curious, this sort of like hybrid visual novel strategy RPG. But I love it, that, that I, I really wanted to get it, and first the bank it in a way, and then play Asia, idiots, they cancel my order. But, um, and over there, like it's nothing, was like the first game on this, on the PS Vita shelf, so it's like, oh, that's mine. So... <laughs> Cannot wait to play Mask of Deception and uh, experience this, because, uh, as, as you can tell, I've been looking forward to this, so... Very, very curious. So that's it for the games. Couple, like, couple for the Vita, 3DS, DS, a Game Boy Advance game out of nowhere. The good stuff, like always. So let's move to the movies and DVDs in general. We've got some movies, uh, anime, TV series. And let's start with um, City Hunter, like Jackie Chan. I uh, heard a lot about this, and I remember watching some of the original City Hunter anime back in the day, but never been too much a fan of it. I mean, it's nice, but uh, I, it, it wasn't really my, my kind of anime, I mean, but it was hugely popular. And uh, to be honest, uh, uh, this might be so far my least favorite Jackie Chan movie. It's not bad at all. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, the fighting scenes are amazing. Although, I have to be honest, now that I finally saw it, the Street Fighter fighting scene, uh, it's a bit too ridiculous for my taste. I mean, it's insane and it's a lot of fun. I mean, I was la I was dying watching that, but it's a bit too much. Uh, and the actress, I mean, she is really, really annoying. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, it's a Jackie Chan movie. It's always a good time watching this. But again, as I said, it's mm, kind of weak, although a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, let's put it there. Next, we got a, bit, a, a very controversial one, especially. Maybe one, when I talked about it the first time, if I ever mention it, I said, oh, this is amazing, but it was just like fresh of watching it in cinemas, which obviously I need time to think about it. Then I rewatch it multiple times. And as I said, I think this is kind of controversial. Uh, that it's Star Wars The Last Jedi. Um, well, I can say I liked it overall. This movie has a lot of issues. A lot of issues. And I'm sorry to say it. I mean, I'm not one of the, like, I don't flat out hate the movie, because in the grand scheme of things, it's okay, but, uh, uh, there are, like, from a storytelling perspective, it's it's not very good, if I have to be honest. Um, and it's incredible. Like uh, I saw a lot of videos on YouTube, and people flat out ate this movie. But as I said, there are issues. But it's a lot of fun. It's a Star Wars movie, and I'm going to watch the Solo movie Saturday, this Saturday, even though there is the whole boycott stuff. But, uh, I mean, it's a Star Wars movie. I'm going to watch it, even though... This past um, movies by Disney, I don't want to say they've been disappoint disappointing because like I liked Force Awakens. I mean, yeah, sure, it's just like Episode Four on steroids, but it was enjoyable. But uh, and this has its good moments. For example, I mean, I have to talk a bit about it. 
Um, the whole controversy with Luke Skywalker, definitely let me know what you think, guys, about that. Like, personally, I didn't mind the way they portrayed Luke. It, it was a bit surprising, uh, but I didn't mind because the whole thing, like, oh my god, Luke was trying to kill Kylo, or Ben Solo, there's something flying, or Ben Solo. At, uh, personally, I kind of like that because they portray Luke more in a more human fashion. That even Luke Skywalker can make mistakes, or I mean, it's as I say, it's more human in a way. Although I didn't like the way they they get rid of him. That was I I really didn't like that. I have to be honest. Uh, and I remember listening to a, a podcast. They were just praising this like it's like it's a masterpiece it's perfect everything it's so good it's such a wonderful movie it's like ah uh, not really there <laughs> half of the movie it's fl flat out filler it's useless obviously there is the i have to mention again there is the character of rose i really didn't like her because it's absolutely useless but apart from that, uh, I enjoyed it. Oh my god, I saw it. Like, there's Leia here. The Mary Poppins scene was... Oh my god, I remember, like, in cinemas, I, I burst out laughing when that happened. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> but other than that, overall, I still enjoyed it. But uh, personally, it's it's kind of weak. So we'll see what happened with episode 9. But, uh, I mean, definitely watch it. Just to, I mean, I've... In the whole world watch it but in case you haven't uh give it a shot maybe you love it maybe you hate it or maybe like me you're kind of in between i love the fact that on the cover they put here the black bb8 which it's in the movie for i think five seconds and it's on the cover i mean that's impressive and i fucking hate the porks let me just add that i hate those stupid things and speaking of star wars Let's move into some amazing Star Wars stuff. I mean, and that is obviously season three of Star Wars Rebels. Oh my god, this show, it's so amazing. I already watched the fourth and final season online, and obviously I'll, I'm going to buy it whenever it's going to be, whenever it be released. But, I mean, this is the Star Wars you need to... I mean, if you don't like the movies... Like uh, Force Awakens, uh, Rogue One, Last Jedi, and now Solo. Watch Rebels. This is by far the best Star Wars material since the Disney buyout. This is phenomenal stuff. Both Season 3, Season 4, it's amazing. But uh, you got fantastic new and returning characters. Um... Great story. Uh, all these characters are wonderfully developed by now, so you're extremely attached to like Erza, Ezra, sorry, Ezra, Sabine, Kanan, Hera, Zeb, all of them. Um, there's oh yeah, there's Darth Maul. There's a big part in both the Clone Wars, which is a, another amazing show, and this. But I cannot recommend this enough. This is the Star Wars. Uh, material that everyone must watch. This is fantastic. Dave Filoni made a phenomenal job. Very curious about the next uh, Star Wars animated series, that Resistance. It probably is going to fill some of the many, many, many holes opened by the new trilogy. But uh, it's cannot stress how good Star Wars Rebel is. Next, uh, this is again an interesting one. Got Infernal Affairs. I, a good friend of mine was really, really praising this movie, and she was always asking me, like, "Have you watched it? Have you? Did you watch Infernal Affairs?" She was really <laughs> insisting on that. I was like, "No, not yet. I need. To, I found it. I need. I just need to, to buy it." So for that conference in Glasgow, I was talking about since I took the train from London, from London, and it's like. Uh, six hours from London to Glasgow, so I gather a bunch of movies, and one was City Hunter, the other was Infernal Affairs for uh, 
going there for return I had other two movies so I got four movies for the trip and Infernal Affairs this is excellent I was expecting something completely different to be honest um, I was expecting something more crazy action like I don't know a John Woo movie basically so this is a very serious movie it's very sort of like psychological drama about like this guy who infiltrates into the Hong Kong triad and a criminal infiltrating the Hong Kong police and this sort of cat and mouse game between the two it's it's really good and the ending had such a twist i didn't, really didn't see it coming so i cannot recommend infernal affairs enough um i absolutely loved it great hong kong movie um excellent story really really good characters both of them did a fantastic job Next, we got, as the last movie actually, then we got some anime, obviously. Uh, it's crazy to think that I never saw this. I just saw bits and pieces here and there. But, again, this is the other another movie that I watched on that train. So like, I basically bought it specifically for that. Because I said, okay, I need to watch it. I have the occasion now. I need to watch Enter the Dragon, the, the most classic martial arts movie. I mean, I know usually I show like ridiculously cheesy martial arts movie, but this time we got a serious one, and it was amazing, of course. Um, uh, I like personally, I never, never watch from beginning to end a Bruce Lee movie because I never felt the need. So I, I mean, yeah, whatever. I saw some pics, and I suppose they're all the same. But watching it from beginning to end, it, it's really cool. It's a really, really cool movie from the 70s. And uh, it's also very funny to see... Uh, what's his name? Uh, John Saxon is also very cool in this movie. I really didn't see it coming. I was like, wait a second, it's John Saxon. It's like Nancy's father from the Night Nightmare on Elm Street movies. <laughs> I love that, uh, and but it's a lot of fun. If you're like me and you never watch it, find it because it's also I suppose it's very cheap online. Find it and watch it because it's it's a really, really cool, good martial arts movie. Um, let's move to anime, um, and let's start with this one. Okay, this might be my favorite or one of my favorite series from these past years basically from the 2010s let's say um and it, because it's and i would say it's not random because it's from the same creator of one of my favorite series of all time that is uh, chaika the coffin princess uh, fantastic fantasy series really really good i love the like the world and especially like um the magic within this world how it is created and also like the lore and story of this world i mean you can see it's from the same guy who did scrapped princess which is again one of the best anime series ever made i think and uh but this is just the first season or at least yeah, first season out of two. But uh, if you never watch it, give it a shot because it's really, really good. The world is very interesting. The main characters are amazing. Uh, Chaika, uh, the little one, she is one of the most adorable anime characters. Especially the way she talks. It's so adorable. It's amazing. I love it. And that she goes around with this huge coughing for reasons in the plot and uh, carries this massive magic sniper rifle. It's amazing! Uh, <laughs> but, um, as I said, the story, uh, like, there is an amazing story here. Um, maybe by the end, because I already watched all of it, not just this, but by the end, maybe it's a bit rushed, but it's still very good. And especially, like, I, I cannot remember his name, but it is amazing in world building and creating, like, this very original fantasy world which it's one of the reasons why I love like JRPGs or anime 
because you have these very interesting and different kind of like fantasy worlds. Um, and this is like an awesome dark fantasy one. I mean, like Scrapped Princess is was a bit more leaning towards the the sci-fi. This is just dark fantasy, and it's amazing. I'm like, love the characters, love the story, love the technology, the 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 world itself. It's fantastic. I wish we had more of this. Absolutely love Chica, the Coffin Princess. Highly, highly recommended if you never watch it. Um, next. We got, again, one of my favorite series. I cannot believe I never owned a DVD of this, but I saw it multiple times, like on TV, I saw it online. This is like the fifth time I'm watching it from beginning to end, and it's a m absolute must. It's a classic from the 90s. Outlaw Star, amazing series. As I said, one of my favorites. Um, a lot of people compare this with Cowboy Bebop, even though it's much, much more sci-fi than Cowboy Bebop. Uh, but uh, it's it's just fantastic. Again, a fantastic universe. I love these characters. Uh, Jean Starwind, uh, Aisha Clan Clan. She's one of my favorite female characters of all time. She's hilarious. But again, a it has one of the best opening song in anime history. I mean. Cannot recommend this enough, but this is a great classic. But everyone must watch Outlaw Star. It's so good. Uh, finally, we got two anime movies from... And it's, it is interesting now that I've managed to get these two. I'm an interesting point in my collection of this series. And that is The Slayers. which uh, That is my favorite anime series of all time. And the movies, while I love them... They're really pressing just one element of Slayers, and that is the goofiness of it, which I love. So, I managed to get, to get the final two DVDs I was missing. So, with these two, I've completed, I got everything, like, uh, concerning the Slayers on DVD. So, that's done, which is very sad to think about it. Uh, so I got the Slayer Special, The Book of Spell, which are three OVA movies, and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's really, really funny. Um, and especially, the, re the one that I was really looking forward to, Slayer's Perfect, the original 1995, yep, yeah, 1995 movie, the first movie based on Slayer's. And this is really good, especially because it's the only one of the movie that uh, has both of the elements. So it's very goofy for the most part, but all of a sudden by the end it gets really serious. And that's, oh, it's back, it's it's Slayers. And it's really good. I mean, it's nothing mind-blowing. I mean, overall the series, it's much better. But comp with the rest of the movies, which are really good in terms of, like, of fun and everything, at least this is closer to the general mood of the series and I really like these editions they're absolutely gorgeous the only problem is they're German so uh, I watch both of them in um, Japanese with German subtitles so basically I couldn't understand anything although of course it, it's a very self-explanatory anime of course it's not very complicated so I was fine but I love the fact that at times, I, to me, the Japanese was more uh, straightforward than the German. I mean, the the German subtitles were just absolute gibberish for me. I, I basically ignore them. But uh, I think it was in Book of Spell. There is one of the movies about this guy cloning Naga. So we got like fifteen Nagas, which was hilarious with her characteristic laughs if you if, if you know slayers you know what I'm talking about and it was hilarious but very very happy about this so yeah now I I'm done with slayers I, I got everything so we'll see what happens I mean I can maybe find the visual novels the uh, the light novels since that's the origin of slayers was a book light novel series um, finally we're almost there um, 
this was a very unexpected item, but when I saw it, I said, like, I was thinking, I need to get this. This is such a unique thing. I mean, of course, many people have it probably, but for me, I, I really didn't expect to see it. And it was like, again, in Glasgow, I was going around, I, I went into a DVD store, uh, a chain that is all, all around the UK, basically, or at least in the major UK cities. And I was looking for, like, some music. But then it was clearly, like, just dropped there by someone who didn't care about it. It's like, they probably, like, grabbed it, look it, and just, like, yeah, whatever, and drop it there without, like, bring it back where it was supposed to be. So, lucky me, I guess. And that is this Ghost in the Shell book by Andrew Osmond, apparently a anime expert. And it is very, very... Uh, first and foremost, the, what really caught my attention was the amazing cover that really captures the spirit of Ghost in a Shell. I love it. I, I was like, ooh, what is that? And it's basically a book entirely focused on the original movie from 1995, which is my favorite anime movie of all time. And it's all about elements such like uh, the philosophy behind Ghost in a Shell, the, the main themes, the characters, what the characters represent, uh, this idea of this sort of like dystopic cities in the future in anime. So there is an interesting comparison with Akira, for example, as you can see here. Um, but uh, it's a really interesting, and it's all like, there are all these um, pictures from the movie, which uh, I, I absolutely love, like, oh, this scene is so great, for example, when you get Motoko going around the town with the music, it's fantastic stuff, and, uh, but also, like I say, this is all text, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting read of more than a hundred pages on Ghost in the Shell, but uh, it's, it was worth it, especially because it was very cheap, it was like, if you buy something else, you get this for three pounds. So I said, like, how can I say no to something so unique about Ghost in a Shell? Which I didn't even know that Arrow, or all of you UK guys, uh, made books. I know I know about their movies, which are like, kind of like, uh, I won't say quirky movies, but this sort of like niche DV series of DVDs. But a really, really cool item. And finally, together with Ghost in a Shell, in order to spend less, since it was eight pounds, but thanks to this item, I spent three. Uh, I was really into the mood to buy something like alternative rock from the 70s and stuff like that. So I was talking with the cashier there who recommended me uh, 2112 by Rush. Uh, I, I heard other things by Rush, but never heard of this. I mean, I know of it, but I never listened to it from beginning to end. And it's a fantastic... Um, alternative rock like it's really really good like this old long instrumental parts which i i love very atmospheric and also like weird at times but it's a fantastic cd highly recommended if you if you're curious about like this 70 the, the alternative rock scene from the 70s this is a must and uh it's such a creative um kind of music that's why i love it so much but uh, i think i'm going to stop here because it's been a very long video but quite few things and interesting stories there so all items from these two months uh hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think about some of these uh items or controversies like the star wars one but uh thanks so much for watching guys i'll see you next time and take care